It is now time to make our way to the next stop on the trail, the Medieval Synagogue. Follow the route on your map to Coney Street. The building containing the clothing shop next is where the Medieval Synagogue and Jewish residences were located. You can pause by St. Martin's Church, marked by a distinctive clock hanging over the street, to avoid the hustle and bustle of this busy commercial area. Here, you can learn more about the fortunes of York's medieval Jewish community. Corny Street today is one of York's busiest shopping streets, and in the Middle Ages it played a similar role as one of the city's most prominent areas to live and conduct business. The earliest record of Corny Street's name is in 1213, when it was called Königstrette, deriving from the Viking words for king and street. It is particularly appropriate, then, that the street had a concentration of properties owned by Jews in the 13th century, as the Jews were under the direct protection of the crown. Unfortunately for the Jewish community, this protection came hand in hand with considerable exploitation in the form of taxes and other levies. From medieval deeds and other property records, we can ascertain that the modern building on Corny Street that houses the next store stands on the site of what was a, a scholar or synagogue, a Jewish place of worship in the 13th century. It is not known what this building would have looked like, as both past and modern synagogues do not follow a particular architectural style. However, it is likely that the medieval Jews of York would have built their synagogue in a similar style to other buildings in the town, perhaps not unlike the Norman house we visited earlier. What's really very interesting is that by the time we get to the 13th century, we can see York's Jewish community not only re-establishing itself, but growing much stronger, much more lively, and it is playing a really important role in the life of the city. Near the Scola were the homes of several prominent Jews in York, and in all of England for that matter. Aaron of York and his father-in-law, Leo Episcopus, were considered in 1219 to be among the six richest Jews in England. Aaron in particular flourished between 1236 and 1243, and during that time he was appointed as the Arch-Presbyter of the English Jews, the preeminent Jew in England. What we can see in the 13th century is the continued need amongst the gentry, amongst traders, for credit and for cash, and the Jewish community really is at the centre of a flourishing financial business. In the 13th century, that business begins to change and is being conducted less with the aristocracy than perhaps we can see in the 12th century, and more with small and medium businesses. But as the 13th century wore on, the taxes paid to the king became heavier and heavier. When Aaron's father-in-law, Leo Episcopus, died, his son Samuel had to pay 7,000 marks to the king to be able to take over the affairs of his father. 7,000 marks was an unprecedented sum of money, the modern equivalent of about two and a half million pounds. The severity of the taxes that were levied on individuals such as Aaron was so great that he died in poverty in York in 1268. By the 1270s, York's Jewish community was in serious decline and Jews in England were facing significant anti-Semitism under the rule of Edward I. We know that the property next to Aaron's house was owned by his nephew, Josque, who was hanged in London in the late 1270s. Many Jews were executed during this time for the crimes of coin forging and clipping, likely a pretense to confiscate their wealth. In an indication of how diminished York's Jewish community was at this point, Henry III's widow, Queen Eleanor, granted the area around the Scola to two non-Jewish citizens of York in 1279. At the time of the 1290 expulsion, only six Jewish households remained in York, including one on Corny Street that was the home of a Jewish man named Bonamicus. 
In later years, this area of Coney Street became the site of the medieval coaching inn, the George Inn. There's a plaque on the wall recording the site of the inn, but there's no mention of the site's relevance to Jewish history in the city. But there is no doubt that this was the heart of the medieval Jewish community of York.